So we're, we're actually going to need your advice, me and me and Costas here, because it, you actually prior to this conversation, we had a previous call yesterday just to get, get a little more, you know, a chat and a little background. And you had mentioned that, you know, cancer care, which is something that, you know, this podcast was actually built on cancer care. And we actually have evolved it now to Canadian healthcare in general. So it's actually quite interesting, the evolution of this podcast. But you had mentioned that, you know, cancer care is not something that is maybe top priority for uh, from from the healthcare perspective, maybe because in, in many ways, a cancer has the, the mortality rate has uh, gone gone down over the years, and it's not something that is um, as as big as say, of course, like COVID sucked up all the air in the last couple of years as well, right? So, you know, what what would you your advice to given that you outline the process? Like, what is your advice to the cancer care community on how do we advocate? for, you know, at least a spotlight on cancer care and not make sure that it's not forgotten, mainly because it is still the, the largest killer of Canadians, um, um, even, even still today, despite COVID. I mean, it killed, uh, cancer kills more people each year than COVID did the entire time, right? So well, what is your advice to the cancer care community? So um, it's not to say that cancer is less important. I think it's just more that, that there's become other issues that have taken up um, prominence um, and attention or competed for attention um, on both the policy and the, and the political level. And COVID, you know, is one of them. And one of the, one of the knock-on consequences of COVID, for example, that I think we all understand is, is mental health, right? Um, it is uh, the, the, the deterioration of, of Canadians' mental health during and after COVID has been incredible to watch. And um, it has led to a lot of other new demands. You could say the same thing about home care and long-term care. You could say the same thing about a number of other things. And so my only point is that it's, I don't think it's that people have de-emphasized um, cancer, although obviously changing mortality rates in some ways make it easier for governments to take their eye off of that ball. But it's to say that I think other issues and demands have come to the forefront. I think what's unique though about cancer is that it has a, especially as the mortality rates have improved, it has a very strong and big survivor network, right? That that are that that are and can be quite politically engaged. And so I think that the you know the challenge, especially as we look towards provincial elections in Ontario and British Columbia, potentially a federal election next year. Um, I mean, I I think it's an interesting question about like when we talk about the healthcare system in the the course of those uh, political debates that are going to happen for those elections. Obviously, we're going to hear a lot about wait lists. We're going to hear a lot about emergency and primary care, which is a top of mind issue. We're going to hear probably a lot about mental health because those are top of mind things for Canadians. But are we going to hear about cancer, right? And I can't remember an election cycle in the last little while in which it has been a top mind, top of mind issue. So my my point would be, the survivor networks need to to organize, and they need to organize around. Um, whether it is access to better treatment, better therapies, or even, you know, frankly, enabling policies that help with a, a healthier uh, prevention approach, like, for example, how we deal with tobacco control, whether we think about food policy, right? And and so the, the I think the question is, if we want cancer care to be more foreground as a policy response by government, it's going to require political organization.